Hello, this is Kevin Bonham, and this is another in the video series on using Adobe Illustrator targeted at scientists. And in this video, I'm going to talk about one of the, what I consider most annoying parts of using Adobe Illustrator, and that's dealing with text. Um, for the most part, I think you should deal with text outside of Adobe Illustrator, but obviously sometimes if you're making a poster or a figure, you need to have some text. And so there are a couple of tricks you can use to make that a little bit less painful. Uh, and so here I have a document open for a poster that I need to make for a conference. Um, and having consistent styles for your text uh, can make everything look a lot nicer, a lot more professional, um, but doing that can be kind of a chore. Uh, so um, if you just grab a text box and drag it open, let's say I'm gonna make the space for the abstract here. Uh, the newest version of Adobe Illustrator adds in some uh, lorem ipsum text, yours may just be a blank circle, or a, rather a blank square. Um, and this comes in with the Adobe defaults, which for some reason they use this Myriad Pro text, which is terrible, uh, and 12 point, which is reasonable for a lot of things, but for a poster, um, it's a bit small. This is uh, this poster is gonna be 90 centimeters by uh, 60 centimeters. So 12 point text, if you look at the actual size even, is still pretty small. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set a sort of default text style. And you do that with the character styles win window. And as always, if you don't have a character styles window, you can go find it. In this case, it's a little bit harder to find, but it's under, if you go to window, and then you go here to type, underneath type, you have a couple of different things, one of which is character style. So if you don't see the window, even if this is checked, the easiest thing to do is check it off and then come back here and check it on again, and it'll pop up somewhere. Um, so you can see here, um, by default, when you open a new document, you have this normal character style. Um, and if you open this, it's going to show you the um, settings that it has for normal style. So again, font is Myriad Pro, font style regular, this is like italics or bold, the size, and then a bunch of other stuff that I usually don't touch. Um, and so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come change this. I really don't like Myriad Pro. I'm going to change that to Arial. And as I said, I think 12 is a little bit small. So let's try 16. So we have that there. And let's say that I go, um, I'm going to pull my abstract text from somewhere else. This is the paper we're writing. Uh, select all of this, paste in this, and you can see there's some weirdness going on, so for some reason this is aligned to the right, I want it aligned to the left. And so now I've got my abstract text here. You can see if I change the size of the text window, it'll move the text around. I'm going to show you how to lay this out in a poster in a subsequent video, but let's say I make some other text. Maybe I have an introduction. Oops. Introduction block. When I bring that in, it's going to have that same Arial, regular, and 16 point. So the nice thing about using character styles, obviously you could just set this for an individual text box. But the nice thing about using paragraph styles is that if I decide at some point in the future that actually this text is a bit too small, imagine I've had sort of a character legend over here, or rather I've had a figure legend over here, it's the same size, and another one over here, just ignore the layout for a moment, if I decide at some point that actually this text size is too small, I can come back here to character styles and update my regular my basic character formats in the normal character style panel. And when I do that, what you'll see if you look at all these text boxes, I'll just do this to 24 to make it really obvious. If I do that, all of a sudden every single text box that had this normal character style has now been updated. Oops, I just canceled it. So let's change that to maybe 21. That looks good. And now all of my things have updated. And you see these little plus boxes, that means that the text that was in this text box previously is now 
overflowing. You can see this sentence sort of gets cut off. So if I want this size, I'm going to have to expand this text box out, and that might screw up my layout. But this way, if I stick to these characters, if I stick to this character style, then I can keep everything in my poster a consistent text and update everything on the fly without having to go remember all of the text boxes where I had used this character style. So another thing you can do is you can add on to an individual character style in order to make updates. So for example, let's say that on each of these, uh, in each of these text boxes, I also want to have a sort of title. So I want to say this is the abstract. I want to say that this lorem ipsum is the introduction. Let's say this is figure one. And so I want to make sure that all of these headings have that are slightly different from the rest of the character style. But I want it to be linked to the character style. So let's say I just want to have these bold and underlined. So what I can do is I can come down here to create new style. And so it makes this character style one. I'm going to call this heading one. And what you notice here is that under style settings, it's the normal character style plus. And so what this is saying is that I'm, whatever I do in this character style is going to add on on top of the defaults in the normal character style. So if I want this to be bold, for example, I'm going to make this Arial and I'm going to make it bold. They don't have a bold underline, unfortunately, but let's just say that I want to keep it bold. Oh, wait, here's underline over here. Let's keep it underlined. Okay. So I have a bold and underlined text. In my heading one. And so now I'm going to come highlight this and select heading one. And you can see there it updated now to bold and underlined. So I'm going to do the same thing for my other headings. Here I'm going to just click on heading one. And now these are all updated with a new character style. So the reason to do it this way that's really helpful is that now let's say again I'm at this stage and I decide well Actually, I want this text to go back to being a bit smaller. I decide 21 is a little bit too big. So I go back to my normal character style, basic character formats, and I'm going to change this back to 18. And what you'll see is that this is updated now, not only the main paragraph text that has my normal character style, but also that heading one that uses this normal character style, and on top of that becomes bold and underlined. So I can change the size here to anything I want, and both the normal text and the heading text will be updated according to whatever I do. And if you change other weird stuff like kerning um, or some of these uh, advanced character formats, which again, I don't typically deal with, all of these things will be updated at the same time, which can be really nice. Another thing that you can do is you can build new character styles from existing text. So instead of going into the character styles window and deciding that you want to sort of manipulate the text style here, let's say I'm going to make a title for this poster. Actually, go ahead and use the you really shouldn't do any text composition in Illustrator for a number of reasons. One is there's no spell check, um, and also it's just kind of a miserable experience. But let's say I take my title here. So I want to do a couple things. So one is I want to have this be centered. And this is obviously needs to be a lot bigger. And maybe I also want to have a different uh, font. I don't necessarily uh, advocate this, but maybe it's still in the Arial family, but we'll do black instead. Okay, I'm not sure if this looks good, but if I want to make keep this title font, maybe I'm going to make a different poster and I want to use similar fonts, come to the character styles window again, and with this text box selected, 
we can create a new character style. We'll call this title. If we go into this, what we'll see is that basic character formats, we have font family, Arial black, and that size 60. And any other changes that we've made to this font text will, uh, will also be altered. So hopefully that is helpful in terms of working with text. Again, I, I highly recommend you type anything out in a different program, whether it's Word or Google Docs, um, and just paste text into Illustrator. Um, I use these character formats for things like, you know, graph titles to keep them consistent, axis titles. Um, you could use a different font for figure legends compared to things that are typed out, like the abstract. I mean, you can do all of that within the character styles. And if you want to get advanced, you can do paragraph styles as well um, for things like justification and uh, spacing and things like that. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, and the next video, I'm going to sh basically start a poster from scratch using these um, character styles that I've just described. And um, that'll be sort of a speeded up video that you can watch if you want to see all the steps that I used to make a poster.